Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here with theautomationblog.com. In this episode of The Automation Minute, I'm going to show you how to set up Communications 2, a Micrologix 1200. Then we'll write a sample program and actually download it to it. Uh, before we get started though, I want to remind you that in previous episodes, we actually took a tour of the Micro 1200 hardware. And uh, I have actually showed you what software you need to program a Micro 1200, and even what cables you need to program it. So that's already all been covered, so check those previous episodes out if you missed them. Um, but right now, we're going to actually set up communications to it and then download a program to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I need to do is make sure I know what the uh, COM port number is for my serial port. And in this case, I'm using a uh, triplet USB to serial converter and uh, that we talked about in an earlier episode. And uh, I'm going to go into Device Manager to find out what COM port that's set up for here. All right, here we can see it's COM port 3. So now that I know that, I'm going to go ahead and open up RS Links Classic. And I'm going to go to Communications Configured Drivers. And I'm going to choose the RS-232 DF1 Devices Driver. Click on Add New. And select the default name. Click on OK. And here I will select COM3. Now, everything else in this uh, window, I'm going to let be set up automatically by using this auto configure button. This has been there for years and years. And uh, when I click it, you can see it very quickly went through and it found all the settings. Now, if that doesn't work for you, um, there's a couple of things that can cause that. You know, it could be a bad cable or a bad port on the unit. Um, that's kind of rare, but does happen. But more than likely, the port is set up to talk some other protocol like maybe Data Highway 45 or DF1 half duplex. The nice thing though about the 1200 is that the 1000 doesn't have is it has a decom button right on the unit that you can press to toggle on the default communication settings. Very cool. We have a previous video that shows you where that is as well. So if you don't know or never seen the decom button and uh, you need to use it, you know, maybe with a little paper clip to press it to default the comms back to DF1 full duplex, check out that video. But ours was already defaulted. Um, and we can see here, everything's all set up and everything's working. So we were successful. So let's go ahead and click on OK and close and double click on our new driver, ABDF1-1. And here we see our Micrologix 1200. So with that done, let's go ahead and write a program for it. Now I'm going to start up Logics 500. But as I said in a previous episode, you don't have to use RS Logics 500. It's expensive today. You can actually use RS Logics Micro Starter, which is like $200 or even less. So um, if you have to buy software for your Micro Logics, like we said in a previous episode, that's what you want to buy. But uh, since RS Logics 500 also works, I'm going to use that. And I'll choose File New. And I'll scroll down here looking for a Micro Logics 1200. I'm just going to choose a Series A to be safe. And here, I'm going to write some sample code to, to test out our outputs. Now, this is not intended to teach you how to write ladder logic. That's why I have my courses. So if you don't know how to write ladder logic, this may not be enough to get you going. But in any case, uh, let me quickly put together a uh, sample of, you know, some sample code here to, to uh, test the outputs on this uh, micro. And I'm going to start by uh, type putting in an XIO. And we're going to use T4 colon 0 slash Dawn. And then we'll start a branch. And we'll put a TON in there, and we'll use T4 colon 0. And we'll have a one second time base with a 1000 preset and 0 accumulate. Then we'll go to our next branch, and we'll put in a move. And let's move that timer's accumulate value right to the outputs. And then we'll end the branch and press Enter. OK, let's uh, verify the code now again. If this none of what I'm doing is making sense, check out one of my courses. They cover all of this in great detail. But I verified the program. We had no errors. So now we have to download it. And a lot of people gravitate to this uh, drop down here. Don't. Unless you've already set up the communication driver, it's not going to work. I've actually had people call and yell at me because of that. But dude, you've got to set up your driver if you want to go online. So here we'll go to com, system comms. And that brings up the RS Links RS Who, showing us the actual networks we have available and showing us the actual Micro 1200, we can select, and then we can click on Download. Now here, the software's asking me, hey, do you want to save it first? Yeah, I do. 
Do you want to replace the existing file with the same name? Yeah, why not? And now it's saying, hey, you chose the MicroLogix 1200 Series A. What you actually have in the field is a Series C and has a program in it already. Do you want to overwrite and still download what you have? Yes, I do. Okay, it says the processor doesn't match. Would you like to change your program to match what is in the, uh, what is in the controller? Yes, I would like you to do that. Okay, here we go. It's going to make the change for me. And now it's downloading my program. And now it's asking, hey, you want to go online? Sure, why not? Boom, we're online. Let's put this puppy into the run mode. Yes, I really want to do that. And now you can hear the relays on the unit clicking as the outputs change. Let's go to the data table here and we'll see the outputs. Okay, see the, let's uh, put this into a binary radix here and you can see the outputs. Why don't we zoom in? There we go. And I don't know if you can see those little LEDs on the front of the unit, but they should match. The outputs should match what you see here in the output data table. And now, because that gets annoying after a while, let's put it back in the program mode. And again, if uh, you found this video helpful, but would learn, like to learn everything you need to know, the program MicroLogix programmable controllers, check out my uh, PLC courses over at theautomationschool.com. There, you'll find my new PLC Basics second edition, which again, everything you need to know, the program MicroLogix, and in turn, almost everything you need to know, the program, the Slick 500, because they're almost identical. You'll find it there on sale for less than a video game. And, uh, you know, I got students in over 45 countries and the course is rated 4.7 out of 5 stars. That's pretty high. Um, but for those, and, and some people in uh, other countries outside of the U.S., that's a lot of money, 50, 60 bucks. That can be a lot of money. So for those people who are on a really, really small budget, I've actually re-released my original 2013 PLC Basics course um, that was Kickstarter funded um, as PLC Core Basics. Again, it's an older course. It's still good. It still covers all the basics, but the video's uh, an older vintage. The audio um, um, uses an older mic. So um, if you do have the, uh, the $60, check out PLC Basics Second Edition. It's available digitally. It's also available on um, DVD, and you can get it on a combo digital and DVD. And no matter which edition you buy, you're also going to get a link at theautomationschool.com to download all the files I use in the course, including PDFs of the presentations I use, as well as my actual programs, all for free for being a student. And of course, you also get support from me up at theautomationschool.com. So uh, check it out. If you need to learn how to program uh, MicroLogix, those are, that's a great way to do it. And with that said, if you've enjoyed the show and want to see me make more free episodes of the Automation Minute, why not support the show? For as little as $3 a month, you can support us and get up to $10 worth of free downloads every month, um, including up to five free episodes of the Automation Minute. So check it out. And uh, that's the end of this episode of the Automation Minute. Until next time, peace.